What's up everyone, Owl here, welcome to episode 3 of Up All Night, and I know I say this at the beginning of every episode, but this might be the final episode? I don't know! Because honestly, I did not expect this game to be this long. I thought the first episode was going to be the final episode, then I thought the second episode was going to be the final episode, now we're on the third episode, so who knows? Last episode, we found Grayson's dad, dead, we found most of him actually, because his leg is still missing. Uh, she went and vanished, and then Felix came over, he put out some mad creepy vibes, and we're following him alone at night, at dark, through the woods, and we found a cabin where the door was open and there was blood everywhere. And now we get to see what's inside the bloody dead people cabin. Spoiler alert, it's probably dead people. Alright, let's get this road on the show. Oh yeah, and we asked him if we could have a handkerchief to cover our nose because it smells bad, and he was like, of course, I'm sexy. So, we have that. He produced a second cloth from his pocket and handed it to me. It smelled old and dusty, as if it had been kept in the back of a wooden drawer and never used. Still, it was better than breathing in the unfiltered air. Felix stepped inside and I followed, close behind him. Ooh, fun. Is that a body? It's part of a body, Nick. Uh, it's most of a body. You know, it's probably pieces of a body. I would hesitate to constitute a body in this situation, or say that it constituted a body. It was hard to tell. It had been so mangled. Hunks of flesh were scattered across the floor. I'm glad Grayson isn't here to see this, but she's alone, and now there's more than one body. I don't know who this is. Nobody was renting this cabin out. Alarmed, he swiftly walked over to take a closer look. Uh, yeah, let's uh, look at the cabin. The whole cabin was in ruins. Blood arced up on the walls, and there were claw marks gouged into everything. I could see an array of pock marks next to the front door. Something glimmered inside of one of them. I picked at it. Once again, contaminating the crime scene, Nick! Metal? It's pretty mashed up, but not bloody. I'm glad my mom got stuck down the mountain. The only way this could get worse is if she was here. What kind of bear just comes into a cabin and rips everything up like this? While I appreciate your interest in the decor, we have more pressing things to examine. He gestured towards the corpse. Yeah, Felix, I can't imagine why I wouldn't want to look at that right away. Weirdo. I followed Felix over to the corpse. Look at the head, look at the hands, look at that body. Let's look at the hands. The hands were the most intact thing about the body. A shotgun lay next to the corpse. One of the rigid fingers wrapped in the trigger. Her nails are painted and they look perfect. No chips. That's kind of weird. Shouldn't there have been a more of a struggle? I would have thought that would mess up the polish. Bright yellow nail polish. Well, whoever this was certainly didn't have any taste. Damn, Felix. That's needlessly judgmental. <laughs> I don't know, it probably looked pretty good when there was a whole unbutchered person to go with the hands. When there was what? A plaid shirt to go with it? Yeah, because that's the most important thing to look at here. He looked at me sharply and smiled? Is that what a smile is? Maybe it's just gas. I'm doing it again, aren't I? <laughs> Whoever this was, they were squatting, and now they are also dead in my very ruined cabin. I know I should be more compassionate, but this place is my life. Look, all, all I'm saying is there's a gun right there, a person has been ripped apart, and you're going on about nail polish? Dude, priorities. Well, I don't think the cause of death was a gunshot wound, do you? He gave a wide, sweeping gesture that encompassed the bloody ruin of the corpse. Yeah, okay, I get it. You love your cabins, and one of them is all messed up. Doesn't change the fact that a gun could be helpful. I reached down and picked up the weapon, and the mostly severed arm came with it. Gross. The final tendons detaching with a snap. A sucking, squelching noise accompanied its rise. The finger was still wrapped around the trigger. This is like Brie. No, 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 I, I have to keep it together. There are other people counting on me. Felix, 
Can you pull that off? I stared at the ceiling, trying not to think about the swinging arm on the trigger. There was a snap, and I looked down. Felix had peeled the finger back. It was so rigid it had cracked when he pulled it off. He threw the arm back on the floor in distaste. You're welcome. Is the weapon of any use? Oh, uh, I don't know. It's a gun? Maybe it can protect us from a crazed murderer or bear or whatever the hell is going on? So, is it loaded? Good point. Uh, I checked. It was double-barreled. There was a single shell loaded into the chamber. One was fired. Feel any safer? Is he mocking me? Gosh, Felix, we get it. You don't like guns. Jeez. Yeah, a little. I mean, I can at least try to kill whatever did this before it finishes me off. I wouldn't worry about that. You have me. What the heck is that supposed to mean? Is he planning on judging the bear to death? Oh, Nick throwing some shade. I mean, I know he's thinking this. He should have said that out loud. Throw all the shade at Felix. He's being a shady little bitch himself. All right, well, I'll just keep this as a backup plan. I looked back down at the corpse. I can see there was something in the front pocket of the shirt. The fabric had glued itself to the exposed muscles above the ribcage, averting my gaze. I reached into the pocket. It was sticky with cold blood, but I did find a hard metal cylinder and pulled it out. A second shell. Suddenly, I heard a voice call out from somewhere outside of the cabin, along with the crunching of footsteps. Nick! You hear Nick? Wait, this car, and that's blood! I turned towards the door, holding the shotgun loosely in one hand, my bloody fingers clutching the extra shell in the other. Grayson stood in the doorway, a shadowy outline of the growing dusk. Grayson, you're here. There's been another death. It was that bear. She didn't say anything, just stared. Her eyes went from me to Felix, who had stood up and strained out his vest, then down to the mangled, faceless corpse. The, the car! No, 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 she shouldn't be nowhere near here. She she's in the city. She'd never come back up since... since... She walked over, each slow step taking an eternity. She froze when she saw the painted nails and started shaking uncontrollably. Is Grayson's mom dead too? Is this Grayson's mom? Oh my god. Okay, so either this is really bad luck or someone's got it out for this family. Dude, this is just not your day. Th th this is my mom. She said it with a detached disbelief, then looked at the shotgun in my hand. That... That's her gun. I know it. That's hers. Maybe it's not, Grayson. You said your mom was in the city, right? M maybe it's not. Does it got a little rose on the stock? It, yeah, it does. She looked she was about to burst into tears, then a look of deep rage to bubble on her face. And what was you doing, Felix? I saw you round last night when I... Why didn't you do nothing? Felix eyed her and sniffed distastefully. I should ask you the same thing. I saw nothing on my walk last night, and last I checked, there were your parents. What were you even doing outside? Grayson, you were out last night too? This ain't nobody's business. Well, what an absolutely forthright and exonerating statement. Especially since I happen to know that Nick wasn't the only one who had a fight with a parent last night. What the hell is he talking about? Well, you see, when I went by to check on things at the caretaker's house, there was a bit of an argument going on inside. Yeah, Grayson told us about this. Her and her dad were fighting because she wanted to visit her, her mom. I heard our dear Grayson here say something about how there ain't nothing to do here, and she's full grown at 18, and how she wished he'd just drop dead so she could move down to the city. The way he mimicked her accent made me wince, and the way I didn't mimic the accent made me wince. <sighs> should have, should have done that. Grayson was shaking, fist clenched, arms ready, weak sneak, mom spaghetti. Is that true? That doesn't mean I wouldn't kill him. How do you think I feel knowing the last thing I ever said to him was that rotten? What did you do when you were out? Just walking around, you know... I was real pissed, so kinda... Kicked at some snow and rocks? Stuff like that. Ran to Felix and he was being right rotten like he is now. Asked about how my mom is when he knows she left. She started shaking up controllably again when she mentioned her mom. She must be trying not to think about what's... What's on the floor behind us. 
Then I sat down to think on one of the cabin porches, and I must have fallen asleep. I get this sleepwalking thing real bad sometimes. Next morning, I woke up at home. And you didn't think to question your father's absence? He goes to town all the time. I figured he must have gone before that storm last night. While his daughter was missing? Maybe he didn't know. I stuck out real good. He could have just left thinking he'd let me cool down. I needed a car to be heading anywhere. Wouldn't have been a big no deal to leave. I'm wondering now if, like, did Grayson, like, pass out? Is she, like, a werewolf or something? Like, I get this, like, walk, sleepwalking thing? Did she fall asleep and murder everyone? I don't know. I'm not sure what's happening with the story. I don't know. Like, first I thought it was Felix. Now I'm thinking it's her. It's probably me for some weird reason. Like, do I even have a mom? Or do I, am I just, like, on the phone, like, Hello, Papa. Yes, and there's like nobody there. I oh man, a likely story. Nick, you, you believe me, right? Uh, I believe that Grayson thinks she's telling the truth, but she could be mistaken. I think Grayson thinks she's telling the truth. Yes, I I believe you. Something weird is going on here, but I think she's told me everything she knows. Felix, Grayson just told us what she did that night. What did you do? Me? I already told you what I did. I think you owe us a little more detail than I walked around and looked at stuff. <sighs> that was insolent. Grayson must be rubbing off on you. So what did you do last night? Yeah, what the hell have you been up to, Felix? I saw you slinking round. Grr. Very well. I went to look at the property, as I do quite often. He stood rigid, his voice clipped and sour, as if this entire thing were a massive waste of his time. I first went to visit Mr. Nash to see if there was anything that needed to be attended to. I thought better of it when I heard his hysterical daughter railing about wanting to murder him because she couldn't go on a trip. That's not what- Do you want to know what I was up to or not? Grayson mumbled something under her breath, but didn't continue to argue. I then decided to check on the patrons staying here. But before I visited any of them, I ran into Grayson again, this time sitting in front of a vacant cabin, pouting. Actually, it was this cabin, come to think of it. Ooh, interesting. The Thickens plot. What? Grayson was at this cabin last night? Oh. Oh, you're right. I guess it was this one. But I must have left before anything happened. There wasn't no car here. Well, I can't speak to anything that happened after I left. But Miss Nash is correct. There was no car here when I came across her. I continued my rounds, or rather I intended to, but ended up waylaid at my first visit. A gentleman staying down the road by the name of Mr. Booker invited me in to talk, for it was when the snowstorm hit. He was complaining about bears getting into his garbage. I got stuck there for the duration of the storm. Once it cleared up, instead of heading home right away, I decided to make one more stop. There is a new guest here, and I wish to welcome them. That would be you, Nicholas. Yeah, you did come see me. Oh, and one more thing. I ran into Mr. Nash while he was out looking for his daughter. Huh. You don't say. You don't say. Why didn't he say anything earlier? You, you ran to my daddy? Then it was you! You killed him! Uh, oh, please. If I had, why would I be telling you about this now? No, he was looking for you, and I told him where to find you, here at this cabin. He also mentioned something about his wife. I believe he made a call to her about her disappearance before the lines went down. You didn't go with him? Why would I? I want no part in family drama, particularly if it isn't my own. Hell, even if it is my own. That's why I killed my dad. I mean, my dad killed himself in front of me with a knife. And it definitely was not me. <coughs> Don't you find it suspicious? Both of them go to where Miss Nash was that night and turn up dead for morning? I know I do. Yeah! That's only because you're telling lies. You weren't even worth nothing. And that's all we got to go on right now. I don't trust any of you. We have to take you at your word as well. Why does I believe that you left here before this... Massacre happened. Honestly, if I was Nick, I'd be like, you know what, guys? Um, I'm gonna take the keys from the dead body. I'm gonna go 
You have fun. I'm just here on vacation. You people live here. Um, shoot me an email. Let me know who is the murderer. You know, I'm on Facebook. Actually, you know what? Don't friend me on Facebook. I, I don't want contact with you people anymore. <laughs> You're all freaks. <laughs> he twisted his lips into a grimace and gestured to the gore-strewn floor. Perhaps you did leave before your mother came back. At least at first. Somebody had to hang that body up. I don't know, the reaction that Grayson had when she saw her dad... I don't think... I don't know if... I don't know, man. She's... I, I don't think she did it. But I know for certain you must have returned. There's a dead woman in here to prove it. How do you know about my daddy hanging? See, Nick? He must have killed him. No, I showed him the video. Uh, I, I told him. He, he was helping me while you were... Damn it, Nick! Why'd you go gallivanting off of this snake? He's always been real mean to me. I don't know why I didn't think of it right when I saw my daddy. He killed him. I know it. I just know it. What about the other guests? Mr. Booker, you said? Felix, is there anyone else up here? Felix shrugged and seemed to dismiss the idea. Nobody's as suspicious as Miss Nash. Miss Lee is here with her three-year-old son, so I find it hard to believe she decided to go on a late-night murder spree. Hey, man, everyone's got to have a hobby. Mr. Booker is younger and staying here alone, but he is, uh, not in the best shape, to put it mildly. Honestly, I thought he was the dead man when you first told me you found a corpse. Finally, there are Mr. and Mrs. Lloyd, a retired couple who drive in from town to go on walks. They became trapped here because of the storm. I find it a bit mm, ludicrous to suggest some retiree slaughtered a woman with a shotgun and hung a corpse from a tree, don't you? I don't know heard of weirder you thought one of them could have done it earlier tonight out of an abundance of caution nick that was also before we found mrs nash butchered in the cabin her daughter was sitting in front of earlier the night someone is definitely responsible for this and there are so many things that don't add up why do kids love cinnamon toast crunch we'll never know oh come on i gotta make a choice uh shit Okay, okay. I think that it's Grayson who's the murderer, but I think she doesn't know she's the murderer. I think she passes out, kills people, goes all Hulk mode, or werewolf mode, and then comes back. I don't think Felix would do it, purely because, as Felix has said, this, like, places his life, and if he loses it, he's screwed. The way we have to look at it is who has to gain by these people's deaths. And even though, you know, it's upsetting, the only person who actually seeks to gain from the death of these two people is, in fact, Grayson. Felix gains nothing. He loses. He loses his only real employee. He loses his reputation. And he loses paying customers. Well, actually, neither of them were customers. But, like, obviously, customers don't want to come to a place where people are getting, like, brutally murdered. Or if this could help business, there's a lot of people who like true crime. Oh my gosh, I'm sleeping in the cabin where Mrs. Nash got torn apart. You know, selfie, click. Like, I can see people doing that because humans are weird. I, Grayson, I'm sorry. I gotta accuse you, baby. Grayson, just admit it. You did this. What? What? No, no, Nick, I'd never. My mama's lying dead on the floor and you're telling me I knew it when I was walking in the woods with you? You were at this cabin, and you were mad at your parents. You told me yourself. Your dad didn't understand you. You told me that. And then I found out you told him you wanted him dead? Shit, I feel really bad for you accusing her. Oh, Felix, get that smirk off your face. She's such a prick. Should have accused him just to be just be a jerk. Nick, that... Ah, oh, I should have saved. Ah, oh, I didn't do it. I should have saved before I made my choice. I messed up. I have made a mistake. I have... I have screwed up. Shit. Nick, that was just mad talk. I never killed my daddy. Never. She's dangerous, Nick. Maybe we should just shoot her now. Okay, Felix, you need to, like, calm down. I clutched the gun in my hands more tightly, but didn't raise it. I, I don't think we need to do that, Felix. I didn't kill nobody. He did, Nick. And he's gonna get you next. I'm, I'm gonna help you. She rushed at me and grabbed at the shotgun in my hands. 
No! She's gonna try to kill Felix! Ooh! I'm I'm enjoying this though. Nice. This is getting oh it's so juicy! Oh see the juices running down everybody and not just the blood from, you know, the corpses. Nick! She wants to kill me, see? She's a cold blooded murderer. Shoot her! I don't think she's a cold blooded murderer, I just think she's like a werewolf. Grayson rushed over and grabbed at the gun. Oh, Nick, you, you shot. Why? Her blood coated me in a fine mist. She toppled to the floor, shotgun pellets sizzling in her flesh. Well, I didn't mean to. I thought the game was going to give me an option on who to shoot. I mean, it technically did. I was going to shoot Felix if it gave me another choice. Like, are you sure you want to accuse this person? But I didn't get that. I didn't get that, that option. Shit. Grayson. No, I liked her. She was cute. I tried to yell, but instead I stood there, suddenly looking down at her dying on the floor. My expression was cold and lax. She stared up at me, chest heaving and rattling of her breath, growing more and more shallow, until with one final gasp, she stopped moving. Shit. Now I was worried you wouldn't do that for a moment. Good boy. Listening to instructions. He walked his fingers along my shoulder, then wiped away a splatter of blood from my cheek. Okay. Oh, I made the wrong choice. I made the wrong choice. I made the wrong choice. Why? Why can't I move? And I... Shot Grayson? I can feel you thrashing around in there, Nick. You have to let go for this to last. Why would I do that? Grayson is... I have to kill this guy. Grayson is dead, Nick. It's only us now. No. He's done something to me. I can't. Yes. Now we can finally be alone. What? The words fell from my mouth with nothing but apathy, even as the pool under Grayson's body spread around the soles of my shoes. Time to go, Nick. Uh, no. 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 Felix. No. My jaw felt like it was going to break, spitting out that one word, but I had done it. I'm going to tell you once, Nick. Pick me. Fall into my voice, drown in it. You do that, and you'll never feel anything but contentment. Abandon your regret. Maybe one day I'll even let you out again. Just as my master allowed me. Ah, shit pickle. Ah, okay. Yeah, alright, we... Hmm, hmm. He bit into my neck. Ah, he's a fucking vampire! And I felt a wave of warmth pass through me. Resist. No, I don't want to be a... I don't want... No! See, here's the thing. If Felix was cool, maybe I'd give in. But Felix is a douche. No. If I just push... I took a stumbling step away from Felix. Defy it until the end, I see. Or you leave me no choice. Come. Ah! He grabbed me by the front of my jacket and pulled me outside. I let my feet hang limp, and they smeared a trail of Grayson's blood across the already destroyed cabin. Oh, that's a bad thing. He stared down at me, his skin shifting like porcelain, pale to the gray blue of a long dead corpse. The red glow of his eyes ate deep into my mind. Give in, Nick. You're already mine. Don't make me hurt you. I stood there, staring blankly at him. When he reached out to touch my face, I pulled my head back to avoid him. The muscles of my neck creaked as they fought to remain in place. You've brought this on yourself. Come. Oh, he's got like long... Oh, dude, trim your nails! I followed him, falling into the snow and tripping over my own feet as I tried to resist the need to stay by his side. Where are we? No! My cabin! Oh, I don't like this. Can I come in, Nick? No! Yes. Felix walked me back into the cabin, where he sat me down on the couch. He bit into my neck on the opposite side and drank some more blood. I found myself leaning into him. I don't know why I'm, like, giggling. This shouldn't be funny. I, I think this is just, like, a panic thing. This is, like, really bad. I don't know how I'm gonna get out of this. I'm sure the game will prompt me. I'm Ah, oh, shit. I found myself leaning into him, eyes half-lidded, my breathing shallow. No, he's... He's... I can't stop him. I have to try to fight. 
Aim from a crotch! Even vampires have weaknesses there! I jerked away and woodenly fell to the floor. I could hardly move unless he wants me to. Sit back up. There's about to be a show just for you. Unless you want to give in now. It will save us some needless suffering and unpleasantness. I sat rigidly on the floor, willing my joints to stay frozen. He sniffed indignantly and yanked me up, propping me crookedly on the side of the couch. I heard the sound of tires on snow. Mom! No, 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 no. One more chance, Nick. Either way, I'll bring you to heel. How? How can I give him what he wants? I... I need to save her! Felix stood and walked over to the front door. He casually leaned up against the doorframe and shook his head regretfully. Seems like you need a better reason to give up, Nick. Let me give you one. Tell me, what happened at the accident? With the arm? The door opened. I'm back! The snowstorm really- Ah! Felix grabbed my mother's arm in a vice-like grip and she cried out, struggling to break free. Nick, what's happening? <laughs> Tell me, Nick, what happened to the R? I... I pretended that- No, I'm not gonna make that joke. I can make a really horrible joke right now. I'm going to resist. All I'm gonna say is dead arm family guy, and that's all you need to know, and I'm not gonna go farther on- from there. Don't tell him. If I tell him, when I tried to pull Bree over, it came off. Oh, that's too bad. Like this? <laughs> Bro, there was a ripping and popping sound, and Felix lazily detached my mother's arm from her body. She screamed it would have fallen to the floor if Felix hadn't grabbed the back of her jacket and propped her up. Bro, no, no, what? Show me how you held it. Ah, oh, he this is some sort of weird vampire kink, Felix. I mean, I know you're old, but damn, bruh. He threw her arm over and I caught it, cradling it in my arms, pressing my face against its bloody stump. <laughs> it was warm, and I could feel the muscles and nerves still twitching under his skin, confused at their sudden disconnection from their owner. <laughs> I don't know why this is hilarious to me. I really don't. Tears started streaming down my cheeks, but I couldn't speak except to answer Felix's questions. I tried to look anywhere but at my mother, but my head wouldn't move. This... this can't be real. I have to get away. I have to. And Tyler? Where is he hurt, Nick? Felix, don't you dare- Felix? Felix? I will- I will take a wooden dildo and I will put it in very unpleasant places. No. Don't- 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 don't do that. I reached up and pointed to my head. My mother had started whimpering, only just now, not when the arm was ripped off, only now. Her eyes were blank with shock at the loss of her arm. Like this? Ah, ah, dude! He grabbed her head and smashed it into the corner of the brick fireplace, sending her crumbling to the ground, twitching. The side of her skull was folded in on itself, a deep crease pulling with blood at the point of impact. Ah, Show me what you did then, Nick. You're a mercy kill. I stood up and took my jacket off and walked over to her crumpled, gasping form. A line of drool slid from her lips. I can't. I can't do this. I need to run. I can't do this again. I can't be a double man slaughterer and also a matricide. Er? You always run, Nick. Don't you see it? I've given you a way out. You don't have to feel this way. Pretty sure this is going to make me feel worse, Felix. In the back of my mind, I felt a numbness radiating out at the source of Felix's influence. If I could just go there, if I could just stay there. I wrapped my jacket around her head and pressed down. She stopped moving, but I no longer cared. That insurance money was mine. Thank you, Felix. You've been very helpful for this little plot, but I believe the game is up. No, I, I, as much as I want Nick to be a secret mastermind, I don't think that's what's happening. It's safe here. I can't feel them anymore. I don't have to do anything, but... That's good, Nick. That's good. Come with me and you'll stay safe, but if you leave... For a flash, everything weighed down to me at once, and I screamed. Tyler, Bree, Grayson, my mom. I felt them all die by my hands, all at once. The misshapen lump of my mother's head twitched one last time. No. No, let me go back. I need to go back. You didn't say a magic word. Please. Please, I'll do anything. Just let me go back. I can't do this. 
I tried to shove myself into that dark space I had been in only moments before, but it was gone. Felix spread his arms out wide. Come here. Come to me and I'll let you go back there. Shaking and dizzy, I stumbled towards him. I clutched desperately at his vest and set his bloody hand down gently on my head, stroking my hair. Look at me. I looked up and gazed deep into his glowing eyes. I felt that cavern of numbness open back up inside of me. Son of a bitch. I, if there is one thing I'm good at, it's getting the bad ending in video games. See? Look, it's right here. I whimpered and curled back into the freeing apathy that Felix offered. Fucking shit. I'll do anything. For anything. For... I'd do anything! But the thought had disappeared. There were no more need to wonder about anything at all. Felix would do it for me. All I had to do was listen. Bad end! Ah! Shit! Alright, I need... I need to go back. This is gonna be a long episode, folks. I I need to go back. I need to go back. I need to. I need. We need. Okay, we're back here. Now I'm pretty sure we're screwed anyway because if he is a vampire, I don't think the shotgun's gonna do any good. Accuse Felix. What? Wait, what? Wait, what? Grayson, just a minute. I I clicked. I... Did I... I thought I clicked Felix! What? What? No, I think... I think Felix has something to do with this, don't I? What? I clicked accuse Felix and it made me accuse Grayson anyway? What? Oh, how long have I been screwed? All right, I'm gonna fast forward to to our mom to to when Felix is like, you have a choice, because maybe maybe I can still save our mother, even though apparently I can't save Grayson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grayson dies. Yada yada yada. Ah, <sighs> okay. We're gonna give up because we clicked resist last time and ended poorly. I should just listen to. I slumped down into his bite and felt a warm trickle of blood drip it down my collar. See, isn't that better? Everything is fine. Come. There's a crunch of snow beneath my feet. We are outside now. Yep, and he's he he's all he's all gremlins too. I looked up at him, and he gazed down at me, benevolent and understanding. The shadow of Grayson's face floated in my mind's eye. Then Tyler and Bree followed. All of them stared at me with an accusation in their eyes. I whimpered. Oh no, that won't do. Go deeper where they can't find you. Here. He gently placed a hand on my shoulder and stared directly into my eyes. I felt myself falling into that gaze. It was as if a cavern had opened up in the back of my skull, a place of darkness and safety. I knew Felix was in there waiting for me, arms outstretched. I need to go there. I'll be safe there. He'll keep me safe. Let me take your pain. I can suffer for you. There's no need for you to destroy yourself of grief. I... I was suffering? Felix smiled. You were, but no longer. It's over now. Forget. You are so much more than these old memories. Would you like to see your new home? I have a home? With you? Of course you do. Ever since the death of my master, I've been looking for someone like you. Someone who is special. Someone like me. Ah, uh, this is still weird. Everything within me radiated joy. He wanted me. I was special. I would never have to leave his side. I grabbed his hand reverently. Reverently. Rev? Reverent. Reverent. I grabbed his hand reverently, but he pulled it away, shaking his head in disappointment. With calculated ease, he slapped me across the face and sent me sprawling across the ground. Felix, you jerk! I landed in a crystallized pool of blood, my hand pressed into an old paw print. You do not touch me unless I give permission. I... I'm sorry, please don't leave me. Tears stream down my cheeks. If he leaves me, I'll be alone. And those faces, they'll start looking at me again. Okay, in my defense, Grayson, I tried to shoot him. It didn't work. He bent down and looked me straight in the eyes. I started to reach out, then hesitated. Permission. I needed permission. 
Felix smiled and reached out, twirling a piece of my hair between his really creepy fingers before offering his hand to me. See? That wasn't so hard. Here, let me help you up. I grasped his hand, and everything was right once more. He pulled me up, and I stood there, gore splattered and beaming. Now, come with me and I will show you what it is like to be free. I am already free. Of course you are, because you are mine. Bad end! Yay! But it could have been worse. Yay! Very good job, fiendish fiction. Congratulations, Tara, Johan, and Michael. Good job, guys. Oh my gosh. So, I got the less bad ending. <laughs> At least I didn't brutally murder my mom. Oh man, now I'm just a vampi vampiric thrall. But, remember, Felix said that one day I could be the Vampire Master someday. So, mm, there we go. Um, I'm not going to go and replay this sort of a good ending, at least on this channel. I might do that on my own time. Uh, because then I'd, I'd have to... I didn't save, and I literally would have to restart the game. Uh, so, if we're not going to... We're not going to mess with that right now. I'll do that later. But, oh my god, that got really, really dark. Uh, so it was Felix. Huh. I feel like I should have known. Like, especially, like, there were clues in the beginning. Like, he asked permission to come into our cabin. You know, stuff like that. But, like, the clues were there. I just didn't pick up on them. But, yeah, that was up all night. That was a wild ride. Fiendish fiction. Keep doing what you do, guys, because that was really good. And uh, I'm excited to see what else you guys come up with. But I'm going to end the episode there. And uh, even though the next game I have scheduled is also going to be a really dark and messed up game, I think I need to start doing uh, some comedic visual novels, because these, these are really dark, man. <laughs> Alright, so thank you for watching. If you liked what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. If you didn't like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe anyway. Please show the devs of Fiendish Fiction on your screen right now some love. And I will see you guys in the next video. Have a good one. Mwah!